Hi all, Mass Barn Cup from Kaiser Power Electronics here. Today we are taking a look at this server power supply. It is a Dell N870P or NPS885 depending on the model number of the reference number. It is an 870 watt power supply at 12 volt DC. So let's try to figure out how to make this run on its own. The power supply is manufactured by the known Delta Electronics. And if we take a look at the sticker here at the front, we can see it actually states here LED states, green AC present, yellow fault, alternating green yellow, power supply mismatch. So that is uh, some vital information for when we want to make this work. It's also worth noting that it has two plus 12 volt rails, so it has a standby SB rail, one pine find amp, and 71 amp on the main output. So we do have some auxiliary power that we have to look for for making this run. We have the status LED and a 230 volt AC plug. In the other end we have the power connectors. There are three and they are most likely three for the negative and positive or how that is mapped out. And then we have six times four pins so we have 24 pins that we have to figure out how to make this run it is possible to just see underneath the lid here that they are marked p1 to p6 and then one to six on the rows here when it comes to the tools needed to do a reverse engineering and hacking job like this what i'm using is a one kilo ohm or 10 kilo ohm resistor a regular multimeter and of course what we need is also a lot of coffee and if you like high voltage like I do please do check out my high voltage mark in my merchandise shop and support the channel it is absolutely stuffed uh, I managed to pull out the 230 volt AC going to the upper PCB part here, but look at this It's completely full of components on two PCBs sitting here. What is going on down here? This is the 230 volt No, that is actually not the input. We have that over here So we most likely have a PFC section and then it routes down with a DC voltage down to the DC DC converter power supply down here. Oh, what's that? That looks uh, odd. If you can see the top of the transformer there. Oh, it's over here. Ah, the um, the output transformer here is actually broken. A lot of the core has uh, gone off. What a shame and also fortunate because that means we can tear this completely down. I don't have to worry about damaging this, we can just take it completely apart, because I have another one. The PCB markings here are actually quite good. As we can see, it is marked P1 to P6 on the power connectors. We have columns 1 to 6 and rows A, B, C, D on the control pins. But on the PCB itself, we also have some texts. Up here we have UVP, which is under voltage protection. Then we have OVP, over voltage protection. I think that says SB, standby, or SR, set reset. It's uh, hard to make out. Then we have main OTP, so main over temperature protection. We have ambient OTP, ambient over temperature protection. And we have SB over temperature protection, which is standby over temperature protection. I made myself an overview of the backplane connector. So this is watching the power supply from behind and not what we see in here on the PCB itself because in the future we would like to just know what to yeah, bridge over or control on the control pins in order to make this work. So the easiest thing to do first is of course to find all the ground connectors and map that out and then we can take the other unit and turn that on and map out the standby voltages and once we have that the rest should be input or special output pins i poked around 
everything all around here, the connectors, the fan, and actually I found nothing other than the grounds that we identified from the ground plane. So I think it's time to fire the other one up and see if we can just find the auxiliary voltages. And then we can see what's left. And the efforts finally paid off. I first tried with a 100k resistor uh, from ground to all the unknown pins, then from positive to all the unknown pins. Uh, I haven't tried from auxiliary power 12 volt DC, so yeah, okay, that was a mistake. But I changed over to a 1 kilo ohm resistor in instead to um, get a bit more current flowing. And here on pin A6, this happens. The fan starts to spin, very slow, varies a bit, but we have, have no output voltage yet. So this tells me that we have multiply input pins to make this run, and we have limited our options so far. And with the, the weird voltage over here, this is maybe our input row, and all these other things are stuff for the server. So um, I'll try to bridge multiplies of these with one kilo ohm resistor to ground. And we have it, huge success. So this is grounding pin A6 and C6, and this happens. 12.2 volt DC output, fan starts spinning, faster and faster. So yeah, that gets uh, quite noisy fast. Wow, that really do uh, ramp up. So that could also suggest that we are missing um, an input to it, uh, to a fan control speed or some kind of current uh, input. And that would be experimenting with um, some kind of resistor on the other inputs while these two are bridged to get some kind of feedback to the fan. Okay, so I patched up the broken core with some tape and uh, I nipped off the heatsink here so I can get a big, better look at what is the UCC 3895 PVM controller board sitting here. And here on the back side it had three potentiometers and adjusting these potentiometers I could get somewhere between 11.68 volt and 12.97 volt. So a good 1.5 volt difference in the output can be adjusted on these potentiometers. Now I did break off the upper potentiometer here while um, destroying the heatsink, but looking through a magnifying glass, I have been able to follow that these three potentiometers goes to the pin one, two, and three, or one and three here on the controller. And that is the error amplifier and also the PVM comparator inputs. All right, so let me sum up what I have learned so far. I fiddled around with the donor one here, got it up and running, uh, did some tests. Unfortunately, I destroyed most of the circuitry over here while trying to resolder the potentiometer and SMD components just fell off it. That was not a rather good job by me. Uh, but I don't want to destroy my other working power supply over here. I never found out what the D6 was for. Uh, the voltage did vary a bit with the output voltage being adjusted on the potentiometers. D5, however, goes high with 3.3 volts when the power supply is outputting 12 volt DC or outputting the main power. And the other remain unknown. We have a function on these three here and I will of course finish this up on a schematic that you will see here at the end of the video. So I really hope you enjoyed watching the reverse engineering and hacking of a server power supply and the methods I use. Until next time, see ya!